Okay, we are looking at varying area ducts and uh, in the last class a very important concept of uh, choking in varying area ducts was introduced in the context of uh, converging nozzles uh, and there we had discussed that uh, it is not sufficient to just look at uh, a variation of area, variation of velocity, you are also have to look at pressure ratios that have to be provided across the nozzle. You have to provide correct pressure ratios across the nozzle so that nozzle operates in a certain uh, desired way. Uh, if pressure ratios are changed then mass flow rates can change, but mass flow rate will not change uh, infinitely. There is a limit and that limit is when at the exit of the convergent duct um, the Mach number becomes equal to 1. When that happens there is a information cutoff uh, because no pressure information from downstream can propagate upstream. Uh, the upstream portions of the nozzle will not know that there has been a change in downstream pressures and as a consequence uh, everything else becomes constant like mass flow rate becomes constant for given uh, stagnation pressure temperature conditions. But if you change stagnation conditions automatically mass flow rate and pressure at the exit will change. But uh, given that the nozzle is always operating in choke condition, uh, then uh, increase in stagnation pressure will lead to increase in mass flow rate, increase in pressure and that pressure may not correspond to the ambient pressure or uh, back pressure. So, these are some of the highlights of what we discussed the last class and that uh, um, sort of discussion should be carried over to our uh, current uh, uh, discussion on convergent and divergent nozzle operation. So, CD nozzles is what is termed and uh, we looked at varying area ducts and we saw that uh, if we have to convert a uh, subsonic flow uh, to supersonic flow starting from subsonic flow you have to go to supersonic flow then the only way you can achieve that is through a uh, CD nozzle that is uh, this is converging diverging nozzle converging diverging nozzle or CD nozzle. So, you can see the schematic of a CD nozzle uh, given over here. Here uh, if the intake uh, at the inlet you have uh, Mach numbers less than 1, then the convergent portion accelerates uh, Mach number. So, Mach number increases and uh, it can continue to increase uh, until uh, the minimum area. Uh, where it should achieve Mach number equal to 1. This is something we saw at the convergent nozzle that uh, the maximum Mach number you can achieve in a convergent section is Mach number equal to 1. Further if you change anything uh, it will not change the Mach number at the convergent uh, section. So, if you need to further increase Mach number uh, beyond Mach number equal to 1. Uh, then you have to attach a divergent duct because a divergent duct is the one which increases Mach number in uh, supersonic conditions. So, if you attach a divergent duct then uh, the flow will further accelerate to uh, supersonic conditions. So, to get uh, flows from uh, low velocities to all the way to high velocities um, you need a CD ducts convergent divergent nozzles. Okay, the behavior of convergent divergent nozzles is uh, some ways similar, but many ways different from our uh, discussions on uh, converging nozzles. Okay. Uh, so, uh, again the terminology should be borne in mind. Now, here in convergent nozzles the uh, exit area and the throat area, this is A E exit area and throat area they are the same. So, the minimum area is the same, but in a convergent divergent nozzle the exit area is greater than the throat area. Okay. So, when we talk about this uh, CD nozzles and we talk about throat area it refers to the minimum area and if the CD nozzle 
uh, is producing uh, uh, supersonic Mach numbers, then uh, necessarily uh, the uh, Mach number at the throat has to be equal to 1. So, if Mach number at throat is equal to 1, a throat is equal to a star uh, that is the star uh, area. Okay. So, a by a star at throat is 1. Okay. This is uh, very important and the concept of mass flow rate choking is uh, relevant here also, uh, because you have a minimum area here and you are giving a certain P naught and T naught to this particular nozzle, so that it operates. And uh, if you have uh, given enough uh, P naught and T naught such that uh, P T by P naught is equal to P star by P naught, okay, then Mach number at throat becomes equal to 1, M T is 1 and mass flow rate uh, becomes con is choked. So, m dot is choked. Okay. So, you should understand the choking of mass flow rate uh, should be understood in proper context. If your p naught and t naught is fixed uh, and mass flow rate chokes, then whatever may be the downstream conditions, it cannot change mass flow rate. Okay. But if you vary p naught, then your mass flow rate will increase linearly. So, this uh, has to be understood. Uh, very clearly. So, but now there is a distinction between exit uh, velocities, exit Mach, Mach numbers and exit pressures and throat velocities, throat uh, Mach numbers and throat pressures. So, that uh, brings in some additional discussions in uh, convergent divergent nozzles. Uh, so, uh, now similar description uh, as we started off, you are looking at uh, not only the uh, area ratio, you are looking at pressure ratio that is happening within these nozzles and uh, you express uh, velocities in terms of uh, pressure ratios. This is what you had done uh, earlier also in the previous uh, class. So, now this is A naught 2 by gamma minus 1 uh, P E by P naught okay, that is uh, ex exit uh, pressure P E by P naught okay. and at throat the pressure is P T by P naught and the pressure varies continuously uh, along the nozzle. It is an isentropic flow you can use isentropic relations to know what is how the uh, pressure temperature density they change um, through the uh, nozzle. Now, if, uh, so, uh, what is the exit Mach number? Exit Mach number is u e by a e. Now, this is a completely varying flow. So, you have to calculate these quantities separately at the exit. A is not constant from uh, the in inlet to exit. So, that has to be really understood uh, properly that uh, exit uh, the exit flow continuously undergoes uh, changes. So, Mach number at the exit can be represented m mm, e uh, by this particular uh, equation uh, uh, 2 by gamma minus 1 p naught by p e gamma minus 1 by gamma minus uh, 1. So, minus 1. So, uh, mm, now if, uh, you can understand from here that uh, if I have a given p naught uh, and I start with a variable uh, convergent divergent duct P naught is given. Initially uh, at the exit also it is P naught. So, P naught by P e is 1 uh, that means Mach number is 0 there is no flow and now I start uh, reducing uh, the back pressure or ambient pressure that the nozzle is exhausting to. Okay, so, it is exhausting to an ambient here. So, P ambient. So, P ambient uh, started to reduce. Um, so, uh, basically P naught by P e will increase or P e by P naught will decrease. So, it can be either way always we look in terms of pressure ratios they are important. Then we look at uh, how uh, the C D nozzle uh, behaves. 
So, uh, similar to previous discussions, once you start decreasing this uh, back pressure or ambient pressure, flow uh, starts happening and uh, as pressure ratio is increased, more and more flow can uh, happen. So, uh, mass flow rates and uh, mm, velocities increase through the duct, even at the exit they will increase. Okay. So, mass flow rate continues to increase. In, in all these sections, uh, the flow at this condition is uh, subsonic, but there is a limit. So, this cannot happen all the while because you started with a subsonic flow and uh, there is a convergent duct. So, as you uh, keep on adding more and more flow, uh, velocity at the uh, V 1 will start increasing. Uh, that means, V t will start increasing and uh, there will come a particular point when uh, V t uh, will become equal to uh, A star. That is, uh, Mach number at uh, V t will be equal to uh, A star or Mach number will be equal to 1, M t equal to 1. So, when that happens, then this nozzle becomes uh, choked. So, further on, uh, there can be no changes in this section of the nozzle, in this section of the nozzle. Okay. So, there can be changes downstream. So, we will start discussing uh, that with a uh, diagram. So, uh, what is known as a perfect operation of the nozzle is when you give the correct pressure ratio uh, such that, uh, so uh, this nozzle has uh, a, a given area ratio. So, this nozzle has a correct relationship between A e by A t. So, A e by A t, when it is properly choked, it will become A e by A star. Uh, this corresponds to some Mach number. So, this is a function of some Mach number. Mach number and gamma. So, gamma if you take 1.4, this is corresponding to a particular Mach number. So, if for say for example, Mach 2 nozzle m equal to 2.0, uh, then uh, A e by A star is uh, 1.6875, uh, this is known. So, um, uh, if you have a nozzle with uh, a given area ratio, it should produce a Mach number of uh, 2.0, but uh, when will it produce Mach number of 2.0? It will produce a Mach number of 2.0 when you give the appropriate uh, pressure ratio across it and that pressure ratio is uh, you can uh, calculate uh, P e by P naught uh, that will be 1 plus 1 gamma minus 1 by 2. 2 square uh, whole power gamma by gamma minus 1. Okay, this is uh, approximately in the range of 8, um, very close to 8 P e by uh, P naught. So, uh, or 1 by 8, uh, P naught by P is in the range of uh, 8. So, uh, if you give the correct uh, pressure ratio uh, for that particular Mach number and uh, for the given area ratio. Uh, then the nozzle operates perfectly, uh, there will be no uh, problems and uh, there will be an isentropic flow, uh, pressure will continuously decrease uh, uh, continuously across the nozzle. Uh, starting, so it is here uh, it is taken as uh, uh, the starting pressure or P naught is taken as 10 bar, so 1 10 power 6 and it uh, decreases. Uh, reduces to the exit pressure. Uh, similarly, uh, density and temperature starting T naught is close to 500 Kelvin and if that correct pressure ratio is provided for uh, Mach 2 flow, then uh, it provides the exact value that is Mach 2 at the exit. Okay, and this is the uh, location where there is the throat which is at x equal to 4. So, where Mach number becomes equal to 1. So, uh, that uh, particular operating condition is known as the designed operating condition for the CD nozzle. For a given area ratio of the exit area ratio of the CD nozzle to achieve a certain 
supersonic Mach number there is a certain pressure ratio that must be provided. Uh, that pressure ratio is P by P naught is uh, 1 by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square gamma by gamma minus 1 this is from isentropy flows. If you give exactly this uh, particular uh, pressure ratio you will uh, achieve uh, the correct Mach number at the exit that is designed operation. But uh, there are many ranges of operations between all this designed operation sometimes pressures can increase also. So, what happens then? So, this is the operating characteristics of a CD nozzle. So, uh, this is the characters this is the schematic representations of how the uh, pressure varies as a consequence mass flow rate as a consequence uh, Mach number how do they vary. Uh, in this case we are considering that uh, we are having a fixed P naught, P naught is fixed and P naught is fixed at a certain value and P ambient or P back pressure is reduced. Okay. Uh, so, when we start the way we start this is that you start uh, that with the uh, same pressure as P naught. Uh, then there is no flow across the nozzle and then P ambient is reduced. When it is reduced uh, the mass flow rate starts increasing velocities increase okay. they can continue to increase and pressure decreases all through the nozzle. So, very smoothly it decreases an isentropic flow it smoothly decreases all through the nozzle. Uh, uh, so, you consider one specific case. So, the inflow is now subsonic. Okay. So, it is a um, convergent uh, area the velocity increases, but the pressure ratio that is has been provided is not sufficient to choke the nozzle at minimum area. That means, that minimum area uh, first condition is minimum area um, a at a throat. Uh, throat area Mach number is still less than 1 that means mass flow rate is not choked. Uh, so, uh, it is still subsonic and then it faces a diverging area that uh, implies that now um, uh, the pressure will start increasing in the diverging area Mach number decreases. So, that is the uh, plot that is given over here okay. Mach, uh, the mass flow rate is less than choked mass flow rate for that uh, particular nozzle. Now, as you continue to decrease P ambient you will get various plots here, but they will all be not choked. Okay. So, you can see that mass flow rate will continue to increase, but once uh, it uh, achieves that particular P star value, P star value at the throat. Okay. So, at the throat it has achieved P star. Uh, that means, uh, mass flow rate becomes uh, choked, mass flow rate becomes a constant and uh, there can be no change to uh, the upstream condition. So, all the cases between these two points right. So, these two points you can continuously have a change in pressures okay, in the upstream as well as downstream, but the moment uh, the Mach number 1 is achieved at the throat upstream does not change upstream of uh, from the throat will not change. So, this particular point when uh, the first choked condition is achieved at the throat is known as the first critical point of uh, uh, CD nozzle operation, uh, but does that mean that you will get supersonic flow immediately no because uh, you do not uh, so for getting complete uh, full supersonic flow your ambient pressure must be much lower corresponding to that particular uh, Mach number. So, if it that is not satisfied uh, then uh, the flow will continue to remain uh, subsonic in this uh, region. So, that uh, when first critical point is achieved uh, flow increases from subsonic speeds becomes Mach 1 at the throat and then it becomes subsonic at the exit in an isentropic fashion. Okay. So, that is uh, first uh, a critical condition. Uh, you now the further uh, pressure is increased actually uh, pressure is decreased uh, ambient pressure is decreased. 
as uh, ambient pressure continues to decrease uh, we first talk about the next critical point that is you decrease ambient pressure to such an extent that um, uh, the flow now accelerates in the uh, in the uh, divergent section it becomes supersonic. So, the flow uh, accelerates and it can continue to accelerate until the exit because now see once the flow becomes uh, supersonic uh, the downstream conditions do not affect the upstream so easily. So, uh, uh, it can go all the way uh, supersonic uh, till the exit of the nozzle okay till the exit. So, that is uh, um, Mach number equal to uh, uh, it will just be achieving uh, Mach 2 at the exit, but if the pressure condition do not uh, uh, satisfy the required pressure condition for uh, uh, fully uh, uh, optimally expanded flow uh, which we have discussed just the previous case then uh, what happens is you get a shock at that point okay we consider uh, the maximum limit is that you consider a normal shock occurs over there so uh, immediately the flow becomes subsonic after the normal shock so that particular point where uh, you have full uh, expansion in the uh, uh, divergent portion to uh, the exit Mach number according to designed uh, area ratio, uh, but a normal shock stands at the exit converting it into a subsonic flow uh, that uh, condition is known as the second uh, critical point. Okay. And uh, third critical point is when there is no shock, it is a completely shock free flow, you have provided the correct ambient pressure uh, for a designed operation. So, that is the third critical point, that third critical point is over here, this is uh, third critical point. So, first critical point is here, first critical point and uh, second uh, critical point is here. Mm critical point where you get a full uh, supersonic flow in the divergent portion, but at the end a normal shock stands and third critical point is uh, when there are no shocks okay, and it is a correctly expanded flow. Now, there are other conditions in between these critical points. Uh, so, if uh, you consider, so once the nozzle gets choked and you uh, start decreasing pressure after the first uh, critical point you continue to decrease pressure. Now, what happens is uh, there is a possibility that uh, the, um, uh, the uh, flow can accelerate in the divergent portion. So, it continues to accelerate here, okay. uh, but uh, the downstream pressure conditions do not support a fully expanded uh, uh, supersonic flow. So, in order to match the downstream pressure conditions uh, in the downstream shock waves form in the duct you can get a normal shock in duct and the normal shock can uh, position itself uh, along this duct uh, and then after the normal shock uh, Mach number becomes less uh, it becomes less than 1 and then you have an increase in pressure because it is a divergent duct it is a subsonic flow. So, all the way starting from first critical condition to the second uh, critical condition you can have uh, shock waves in the duct and they move from um, lower and lower strength. So, as they go higher and higher uh, here outside the shock Mach number increases. So, the strength keeps increasing until the exit. Once it reaches the exit you pass the second uh, critical point. Then what happens is that uh, you can have, uh, uh, so now between, uh, so just before it reaches the third uh, critical point completely expanded flow, correctly expanded flow, if the pressure ratios are slightly um, lower that means you still have higher pressures, then at the exit you get oblique shocks. Okay, So, you get oblique shocks, the reason is that uh, uh, the flow has now expanded completely uh, 
uh, but the outside pressure conditions do not uh, uh, sub uh, allow a completely expanded flow, but the nozzle has no way of communicating because it is supersonic. So, as a consequence you get oblique shocks okay. when those kind of oblique shocks are formed uh, then that uh, operation of the nozzle is uh, termed as over expanded operation over expanded operation. Now, what happens if you can you can reduce continue to reduce the uh, ambient pressure further down uh, then uh, then what happens is that you get perfect exam uh, expansion until the nozzle exit. So, P e will exactly be equal to uh, the corresponding uh, pressure ratio for the nozzle uh, Mach number that uh, function of Mach number. But uh, the uh, now the pressure here uh, will be greater than uh, the ambient pressure outside. Okay, it will be greater than ambient pressure outside uh, because you are further reducing uh, uh, ambient pressure. So nozzle can continue to I mean the flow can continue to expand outside the nozzle. Uh, so it expands using uh, by using uh, by a series of expansion waves and that operation is called uh, uh, under expanded operation under expanded operation. If these uh, uh, oblique shocks become very strong they can move within the nozzle and uh, can cause uh, uh, the jet to be separated from the nozzle this is a uh, interaction due to the shock and the boundary layer. Uh, that is called severely over expanded nozzles ok severely over expanded uh, operation. So, here is a schematic of all that uh, we had discussed uh, till now uh, first condition here when flow is completely subsonic uh, back pressure and exit pressure should be the same ok. Uh, second condition is that uh, uh, the flow is subs uh, flow accelerates to Mach number equal to 1, uh, but uh, is subsonic at the exit there is uh, 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 no case for uh, a the, the back pressure does not support a fully supersonic flow. The third case is that uh, you have continued to reduce the back pressure, uh, but it is not sufficient to produce full supersonic flow. Therefore, you have shock waves in the duct even now the exit uh, velocity is uh, uh, subsonic. So, uh, it satisfies P e is equal to P b. The uh, final limit of this is that you get a normal shock at right at the exit. So, here completely it expands to uh, supersonic flow, but right at the exit it becomes uh, subsonic even at this condition P e is equal to P b. But beyond this condition if you decrease back pressure then P e is no longer equal to uh, P b need not be equal to P b. There is a perfectly expanded condition where uh, uh, P e equal to uh, P b that case where there are no shocks completely supersonic flow that is optimally expanded. Uh, but if there is, it is not optimally expanded then you have two cases over expanded nozzle operation and under expanded uh, nozzle operation. So, in over expanded nozzle operation the exit pressure is less than ambient pressure or back pressure. So, in order to match pressure ob oblique shock waves form in under expanded nozzle operation the exit pressure is greater uh, than the back pressure. Uh, to uh, match the uh, pressure conditions uh, expansion waves form. So, uh, this is what uh, we had uh, discussed. So, the over expanded operation this uh, picture uh, should remind you of what we had discussed in uh, um, the uh, class on uh, oblique shock wave reflection. So, this uh, is exactly what happens to the jet after it leaves uh, the nozzle uh, even it is in over expanded condition. The, so, in over expanded condition P 1 is less than the ambient pressure 
uh, at this boundary of the jet and the ambient always pressure should be equal to p ambient okay so this is known as the free pressure boundary uh, these oblique shock waves uh, come in and this is a symmetry line so here flow has been deflected towards so it has compressed so you see that the area of the flow has decreased uh, but then it cannot go on doing this uh, because it reaches the center line so again further uh, a reflected shock is formed so that it turns the flow parallel so when it uh, when the flow passes through two such shocks you will find that p3 is uh, greater than p ambient so as a consequence at this point of interaction of the shock with uh, the free pressure boundary uh, it has to reduce pressure so that in p4 uh, it still remains p ambient and as a consequence you get um, the expansion waves uh, similarly in uh, under expanded jets you can look at it in the uh, sense of uh, just the reverse p3 is greater than p ambient so uh, to match pressures uh, expansion waves form uh, this is uh, the expansion waves continues to expand the jet so in p5 region your pressure will be much lower than ambient in order to match pressures in p6 region uh, these uh, under ex uh, these expansion waves uh, reflect as compression waves which can form shock waves such that it's still uh, satisfies the boundary condition that it is p ambient at the jet uh, uh, periphery okay so this is a uh, typical uh, severely under expanded uh, jet uh, produced in uh, the laboratory and here you can see um, the expansion waves uh, the rapid expansion that happens as a consequence there is a, a increase in jet area a uh, lot of expansion waves are produced over here these expansion waves go and meet the um, uh, boundary of the jet over here and they form compression waves and these compression waves actually coalesce together to form a shock here and that is the barrel shock here okay now uh, these shock waves are interacting in such a way that they cannot form a a uh, very regular kind of reflection that we just saw previously it forms a mac reflection so this is known as mac stem so this is a case of a uh, severely under expanded jet so you can have cases where oblique shocks can move uh, at corresponding uh, pressure ratios into the nozzle and uh, separate uh, the jet out of the nozzle because of interaction of shock wave with the boundary layers along the uh, jet so uh, that these form the various uh, different uh, operating uh, regimes for a convergent divergent nozzle and uh, uh, what we will do uh, is understand them in more detail by doing a particular problem in the next class so uh, mm, so that you get clear uh, about the relationship between area ratio pressure ratio and the way the nozzle operates okay uh, so with this we close on uh, how a cd nozzle uh, works various operating conditions uh, and their relationship with pressure ratio and area ratio thank you